Hey everyone, Sirix here, and welcome back to Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers 20th Anniversary Remake. Um, in the last video, we went to the Dixieland Drugstore, where I can't remember the name of the owner, but we talked to him for a while, and the most interesting piece of information we got out of him was anytime we talked about the voodoo murders or showed him a picture, he gave us the phrase Cabri Sanca. And I don't know if I'm mangling that because my French is bad, but uh, we have not been able to find out what it is, and he pretends that he didn't say it every single time he says it. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and Dr. John also doesn't seem to know what that means, so we have some sort of phrase that uh, nobody seems to know about, but it's very suspicious that he blurts it out every single time we talk about the murders. Um, and yes, we also did go and talk to Dr. John, who is the owner of the Voodoo Museum here, and uh, we only probably got through half, if, if even that, of his dialogue, so that's what we're going to focus on right now. He's giving us a lecture on historical voodoo, current voodoo, and um, yeah. So let's go right in and continue where we left off. Let's talk to Dr. John. Can I ask you some more questions? Of course. I also find our dialogue stimulating. Not the original voice actor. The original voice actor was, I think, yeah, a person who did Worf on Star Trek. Or the next generation, rather. Uh, definitely not him. But let's keep on going. Uh, I will go and clear out some of these non-gold uh, text items. What do you think of New Orleans? It is the only city in the United States, as far as I am concerned. What is it about New Orleans that you so admire? It is a real culture of its own, Mr. Knight. Amid the horrid blandness that is Americana, New Orleans alone has a voice. Spoken like a true Nolinian. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It is one of the important ceremonial nights in Voodoo. What else can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I am afraid I do not know the origins of St. John's Eve. I only know that it was a night of ritual long before Voodoo came to New Orleans. It's a little weird that he doesn't... I, it's very clearly a Voodoo holiday sort of thing. Even if it was made up, you would think he'd kind of know about it, but I guess not. Snakes, well, he better know something about snakes because there's one right above him. Do you know anything about snakes? Ah. Oh. You have perhaps noticed the museum snake, Mr. Knight? They are beautiful creatures. Do you not agree? And the tourists seem to associate them with voodoo. Yeah, the snakes are usually kind of neat. I will agree with you. Snakes is gray. Is this snake yours? Do you use it in your practice of voodoo? I admire the spirit of the snake, Mr. Knight. But snakes like the museums can be quite dangerous to handle. You, you didn't really answer my question. I think I did, Mr. Knight. Uh, okay. Chat's usually pretty, uh, quick. So how is the museum business? Those who truly seek to understand are few, Mr. Knight. But even one can be an audience. Sounds about like my shop. Yeah. Gabriel does not get many people over at his shop. So where do you pick up all this stuff? Oh, here and there. We accept donations of any pertinent items. Do you ever get any wackos in here? You mean, besides yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides me. I do not care to make those kinds of judgments, Mr. Knight. All are welcome here. Gabriel's kind of a wacko, so, yeah. You're a big guy, aren't you? You work out, play sports? I do not play basketball, if that is what you want to know. Who, me? No, you just look like such a natural athlete. I do find ways of keeping fit, Mr. Knight. After all, 
Our bodies are temples. You sound like Grace. I should get the two of you together. Is Grace your wife? No, she just acts like it. That's a lot of chat. So what do you think of our summer weather? Have you ever seen it so overcast or so muggy? It is unpleasant. The heavens are not pleased these days. I like overcast. I don't really know if I like muggy though. Nice outfit. I prefer simple cotton to dead flesh, Mr. Knight. I'll have to remember that. Wow, that was rude. This is quite a place you have here. Thank you, Mr. Knight. I have dedicated myself to the preservation of this unique culture. It is gratifying to see others reap the fruits I have sown. Okay, we are done with chat. If I remember, he has a lot of stuff to talk about himself, especially the tell me anything at all category. And yeah, I'm skipping these, but eh. Tell me about yourself. Me? Yes, if you don't mind. What is it you wish to learn? Anything. Anything is gonna be a long time. Why did you open a voodoo museum? The subject has fascinated me all my life. And I wanted to help preserve the cultural heritage it represents. Understandable. What kind of background in voodoo do you have? Let us just say I cut my teeth on it, Mr. Knight. It is in my blood. Do you do anything besides run the museum? No. The museum does not make me a rich man. But my material needs are simple. I prefer to focus on my one true interest in life. What are your own religious beliefs? My beliefs are too personal and too complex to discuss with a layman, Mr. Knight. Anything at all. Just tell me anything. I am originally from the West Indies myself, you know. Really? What brought you to New Orleans? I was drawn here for personal reasons. Just tell me anything. I am a vegetarian. Really? I can't imagine living without meat. That must be the hunter in you, Mr. Knight. I can't either. I cut out meat and I am an upset person. Just tell me anything. I am not an easy person to get to know. I am a very private man. Isn't that unusual for someone in the museum business? Not at all. My displays speak for me. There are a lot of displays and I can see that, yeah. Just tell me anything. Not everyone can come see the museum. So I occasionally do public speaking on the subject of historical voodoo. Anything coming up that I might attend? No. But then you have me all to yourself right now, do you not? I suppose we do. Only we have nothing else to ask about you. Um, I thought that was longer, but maybe not. Actually, I can't think of a thing. Then let us discuss something else. Let us discuss the things that are important. Uh, I don't want to do it. current voodoo. I think that's going to be longer. Let's talk about Marie Laveau. Tell me about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaux, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Laveau tomb, where one or both of the Maries are believed to be buried, is in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. It is a popular shrine for practitioners and tourists alike. I myself take tours through the cemetery on a regular basis. We're gonna get really? that area? Do you have any running this week? No, but the cemetery is open to the general public as well. Aha. Okay, that area is usually open much earlier in the game. I'm not gonna really mention why because we may find it out later. Because clearly we didn't find it out uh, through other methods. So we'll see what happens when it happens. But I am glad that came up. That was a zone I was kind of wondering where it was. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. When the widow Paris began to practice, there were many voodooians in the city. By 1830, she was voodoo queen of all New Orleans. The widow Paris was a hairdresser for rich Creole ladies. She also paid household servants to spy for her. 
Between the two, she knew everything about everyone who mattered in New Orleans. She was not above using her information to appear psychic, to intimidate, or even to blackmail. You sound as though you admire her. For a black woman in the mid-1800s to gain power is an incredible thing, Mr. Knight. However she achieved it. Yeah, I guess so. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She kept a pet sneak, danced with it too. She held traditional voodoo ceremonies out by the lake. She took herself seriously, very seriously. But she was not above selling tickets for her events to curiosity seekers. She was not above using voodoo any way she could to make money. That is for certain. But if she had been in another line of work, in another age, that would have been interpreted as entrepreneurial genius, rather than a sign of fraudulence. Hey, you don't need to convince me. I admire anyone that can actually make a living. That's a little weird. Marie Laveau is grayed out, and she has been, but he continues to give us new information about her. Uh, I'm assuming it's because it's no longer uh, gold-colored, because we got the one piece of information out of him. I still kind of think that means it should revert to white text, meaning there is stuff to talk to him about, but uh, it may not be important. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. It was Marie Laveau who defined the voodoo that is truly and uniquely the voodoo of New Orleans. She invented hundreds, if not thousands, of spells, potions, charms, and incantations. These form the basis of the modern practice. Not to mention the folk tradition of hoodoo. He doesn't go into that, which is weird because in the original, again, I'm gonna say in the original, in the original bundle, in the original, like 50 million times, but he went on about a hoodoo, which is the kind of, if you think about it, it's a lot like the guy at the drugstore, kind of selling goofy little trinkets and spells and everything that are kind of pretending, I guess, to be voodoo, but really isn't. Um, at least that's what I kind of got out of it. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. Her daughter, Marie Glapion, took over when Widow Paris got old. Most people thought it was the same Marie Laveau. Both Maries encouraged that point of view. The Widow Paris died in 1881. Marie Glapion had been reading a long time by then. After the death of the Widow Paris, other voodoo queens surfaced and by 1890, the cult was fragmented again. Marie Glapion just sort of faded away. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. You have heard everything about Marie Laveau that a layman might expect to understand. Okay. Well, then... Let's go and find out about current voodoo. Tell me about current voodoo. Many people think of voodoo in terms of magic spells or gree gree. That kind of practice is actually called hoodoo and is only a part of true voodoo. Voodoo, the religion, has a strong following in New Orleans. In fact, it is growing quite rapidly. There are several voodoo churches or temples in the city, and others all across the United States. African-Americans see it as a tradition all their own. White, and there are many in the religion, are attracted to it because they think it is exotic. I personally am more interested in the history of voodoo. Some of the new movements are copying Haitian or even African voodoo. But it is the voodoo of New Orleans that I find so intriguing. Okay, so he does go off on a, a talk about hoodoo. I, I was just, I, I hadn't unlocked it yet. So let's talk about hoodoo, which is apparently current voodoo. What exactly is hoodoo? Hoodoo refers to magic folk traditions of the South. Hoodoo is a bastard of voodoo. Many of the Gri Gri are similar, but hoodoo does not have the religious aspects of voodoo. Oh, he does not have much to say about that. Uh, himself one more time, maybe? Tell me about yourself. What more can I tell you? Actually, I can't think of a thing. 
Then let us discuss something else. Okay. So we have exhausted all of our conversation topics with Dr. John. And like I mentioned in the uh, in the other video, we did get this flyer. Which we can't look at. Well, we can look at. A flyer advertising Magenta Moonbeam, a local voodoo Her parlor is on the corner of Orleans and Dauphine. <laughs> they catch just did a die off of a very large bookcase. Hopefully she doesn't start meowing and being annoying. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, Madame Moonbeam, I guess it is. Uh, I was distracted, unfortunately. Um, in the original, there is no flyer. Dr. John actually refers you to her saying, oh, well, if you want to know more about, I think, current voodoo or hoodoo, go talk to her. Uh, I kind of, actually kind of like it like this because he's more interested in the historical, uh, aspect of voodoo and he kind of, the current voodoo is kind of, at least what I get out of him, kind of a joke and kind of more for tourists. And that is definitely what uh, this other person is. So it makes more sense that he wouldn't directly really refer us to her. But that said, uh, we don't really have anything else to do here then. So let's uh, wander out. I'll be going. Come back again. Ooh, okay, so we have multiple places to go now. Ah, now I don't know what to do. We could continue on with uh, getting some more information about Voodoo, or Hoodoo, going to the Moonbeam residence. We could check out the St. Louis Cemetery, which, again, in the original game you could go to right off the bat. But I kind of want to go talk to Mosley. When I started this day, I said I wanted to go to the Dixieland Drug Store, to the Voodoo Museum, and to go talk to Mosley. And yes, we got some more places to go to, but I'm going to stick with that for right now. Let's go scope out Mosley. Again, we get the outside view. Mosley's office is apparently enormous. All of this is most well. I mean, really, if you look at the building, uh, Mosley's office is really this area. <laughs> he has a big office. Let's go into the police station. So so far, I haven't really been that paranoid about saving, and I I don't have to be right now. I am gonna save it just in case because. The police, a the police station is a little bit, um, it's changed enough that I don't entirely know what's going on here, so I will save it. Uh, you would think that in a game like this, with murder and voodoo and generally adult themes, that you would die so much more easily. Uh, that's not the case. That is not to say that you can't die in this game. Um, I don't think you can make the game unwinnable, but really, you don't face many uh, challenges that can it result in your death until much later on in the game. So we're not too worried about that, unless they decided to add a few extras. Let's talk to Frick over here. Can I bother you again, officer? What is it this time? Um, I will probably mention it in a comment in, I think it was the third video. Was that the third video? No, it was the second video where I said that this guy sounded a lot like the original. And I personally think he does. But, uh, no, this is not Jim Cummings. What can you tell me about snakes? What does this look like? A zoo? Never mind, don't answer that. No. I don't know nothing about no snakes. But he, he, he still kind of sounds like it. It is a very good match for this character. 
What do you know about St. John's Eve? A bunch of crazies out there on St. John's Eve, that's what. We're busy all night. Really? What kind of crazies? Oh, your usual howl at the mooners, I guess. They don't look no weirder than them that come in during Mardi Gras. Never can tell, though. So we're just going through, again, like I said, as we learn new topics, we can talk about them with everybody else that we've met. We can probably do the same thing with Grace when we go back to the bookstore, and I'm sure we will. Do you know what Capri San Cal means? No. Sounds foreign or something. It does. What do you know about Marie Laveau? Marie who? Is she the one that hangs out on Conti and Nash? Uh, no. Never mind. She is not a prostitute, I don't think. I think so. Maybe. Do you know anything about animal masks? I see plenty of masks during Mardi Gras. Not many animals, though. Of course, there's plenty of animals underneath. So, uh, I, I, maybe I should write this down as like a personal note or something to mention during the videos. Uh, I recently went through and did the editing for the start of this day where they went and uh, it was the, the new day and they gave you a little bit of uh, text that I had to read because there's no voice acting for it. Um, it pretty much straight out talks about animal masks. So we know that those are important probably today. Um, so yeah, I should maybe like write that down so I can point it out as it happens during the day because I don't necessarily really remember that sort of stuff. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. Excellent. We can just go right in. We can just uh, go right into the uh, police office. We couldn't do that before. If uh, Mosley isn't in, we can't go back here. The bulletin board is littered with everything from wanted posters to flyers. Okay, uh, bulletin board doesn't matter. Copier, can we look at you? There's a photocopy machine in the office area. Okay, can we? We still can't move. Well, can we? No, I kind of just wanted to move. Thermostat, can we look at it? There seems There's to be a, a note. Temperature gauge on the wall near Mosley's office. Um, so we can't look at it. Yeah, we can't look at the note. Uh, but based on, you could look at it in the original, and I can, if I look really close at the screen, can uh, make it out. It just says do not touch. Camera inbox and Frank's. Uh, let's look that at the camera. camera. Looks professional. Well, probably it's a police camera. It's an inbox. Can I take things from the inbox? There's nothing of interest in the inbox at the moment. Uh, I don't know. It's a police station with an inbox. <laughs> Even the most random things are probably interesting. Detective like Frank's. Excuse me, officer. Yes. Oh, we actually get options. So, what's it like being a policewoman? The glamour never ceases. You know, that uniform looks great on you. Uh huh. Is that a compliment, or are you asking to borrow my dress? It's a compliment. Well, you just never know around here. Thanks, but I'm married. And we would also like to borrow your dress. Could you get me some coffee? Are you speaking to me? Why, yes. Wow, Deja, leave it to Beaver. I'm the police photographer, sir. You might be able to find someone around here dumb enough to get coffee for you, but it won't be me. Oh, thanks anyway. I can give you precise instructions for the handling of hot liquids if you need them. N no thanks. No, okay. Mosley, oh, oh wait, never mind. Oh, never mind. Fine, I'll get back to work. So Mosley's office is back here. A mirror. The mirror reflects. That's all it does. So we actually we can operate it. We're just gonna like play with our hair. On the wall. Who's Oh, never mind. I already know. Ugh.
Looking good, kid. Uh huh. Okay. I was just kind of like looking at things out here before we actually go into Mosley's office proper. Um, can we operate the thermostat? And that says do not touch. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so it does tell you. Button, button, button. Cold. Huh. We can change it. I'm not going to. Hmm. Okay, I'll mention what's weird about that later. What else is here? Again, I'm gonna use a space bar and it's kind of funny, I look back in the old videos and I'm like, I'm not going to use face bar. I'm not going to use face bar. This is cheating. This is cheating. Ah, uh, and, then, and then I, like, within 10 seconds probably use it. No, I'm using it to see if there's anything else interesting to talk to. I'm not stuck at this point. We, we have two people to talk to. And according to this, there is really nothing else here. The overlap here is the inbox. Uh, so let's go ahead and go into Mosley's office. Yeah, he looks at the mirror. He did that in the original, too. He just looks in the mirror to make sure Mostly, he's looking good. My man. It's you. God help me. Huh, perspective change. It's a different angle, usually. Again, no complaints, but... A microwave here. I'm pretty sure the microwave was right next to him last time. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can talk for. Well, let's see what's here. A microwave. A microwave. If Gabriel knows Mosley, it's used exclusively for frozen corn dogs. Plates. Okay, we can't look at the plates or the documents here. There's the window. That window has a lovely view of an alleyway. The brick wall of the building next door, and some creative graffiti. Could we maybe unlock this? If Mosley wants the window open, he can do it himself. Okay, so that's to open the window, which is weird because it didn't give you a... Oh shit. That's not what I intended to do. I intended to click on that and show... I'm gonna hit the road. Ciao, baby. Show that there was an open icon. But it just detected that as an exit point and left. So, my mistake. My mistake. Mostly, my it's you. Skipping past that. Let's keep on looking. Filing cabinet was over here. Whatever goes into those files never comes out. Yeah. Power plug, light post, more files. Whatever goes. So this window. Let's look at the window, actually. That's funny. The window is a mirror on the other side. Yeah, so that is a one-way window. When we look out, we can see it. We can see the rest of the office. But when we look in, it is a mirror. Is there a thing here? No. Coffee cups. Exit. Bookcase. Oh, we can look at the bookcase. Mosley's bookcase holds old magazines and binders. Mm, well, let's go with the bulletin board. We can't look at this thing. It kind of stands out. Police department memos and other didactic blurbs. Nothing in this little thing here. We have a desk. Look Mosley's at the desk. desk has more growing on it than his head. I guess. There's no reason to go through the desk at the moment. There is always a reason to go to the, through a desk in an adventure game. But, okay. Computer? No. Desk. Book is phone. Gabriel doesn't want to use the phone here. Well, we have somebody... Uh, we did have somebody earlier in the game, I think in the first video actually, t uh, Grace told us that somebody wanted us to call uh, a relative in Germany. You could do that here. Mosley's phone. But it won't let us. Oh, uh, let's finish up looking around the room by looking at the wall. Mosley's office looks a lot like his room at college. So to see if I miss anything, 
Hit the space bar, and now we got everything that I can see. Get the chair. The visitor's chair is hard and uncomfortable. It must be one of those sly police tactics to keep civilians unnerved. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so we are running out of time, so I'm going to stop this here. And in the next video, we will talk to Mosley and see if maybe he has some more information on, uh, or on us. Probably not on us. Maybe he actually, he might have some information on us. But we're not interested in that. Uh, some more information for us is what I meant. Uh, because he is kind of feeding us information about the voodoo murders and we might be able to get something out of him. So in the next video we will do that, and until then, thank you for watching, and see you then.